You are a reckless teen racing a train in your car as shown in the figure below. Initially, you and the train both have a velocity of 20 meters per second, but the train is ahead of you by 150 meters. The train moves with constant velocity, and you accelerate in an attempt to reach the finish line before the train does. The important aspect of this problem is that not only is it a kinematics problem, it is a kinematics problem involving two objects. One is the train, one is the car. And in order to solve this problem, what we need to do is be consistently meticulous with our notation. Any variable that applies to the car will be labeled with a subscript C, and any variable that applies to the train will be labeled with a subscript T. Therefore, we can make a list of equations, those that apply to the train and those that apply to the car. We'll draw the equations for the train in red and the equations for the car in blue. For the train, we have this set of equations where each position, velocity, and acceleration has been labeled with a subscript T. However, the time, which is common to both the train and the car, carries no subscript. and the similar set of equations for the car look the same except for every position velocity and acceleration has been labeled with the subscript C to represent the car. Let's go through the original language of the problem and see if we can pull out some of the variables. The first number we see in the problem is the number 20 meter per second and that refers to both your velocity and the train at the initial moment. Since these are initial velocities we see that V0 of the train is 20 and we also see that V0 of the car is 20. The 150 meters is the distance between the front of the car and the front of the train. This distance will be referenced as we try to set the initial position of both the car and the train. Now it's actually up to us where we would like to call this initial position. One possibility is to define a coordinate system with x equals 0 at that vertical blue line, in which case the car has x0 of 0 and the train has an x0 of positive 150. Another reasonable location would be here to define the line of x equals 0 such that the car has a negative 150 meter x0 and the train has a 0. Finally, and a little bit more bizarrely, would be to define the x equals 0 location at the finish line, meaning that the car has an x0 of minus 2000 and the train has an x0 of minus 1850. Seems to me that uh, the simplest way to approach it is to define x equals 0 at the location of the car. In this case, we can set the initial positions of both the train and the car as being x0 of the train is 150, whereas x0 of the car is 0. Furthermore, since the train has a constant velocity during its motion, its acceleration will be zero. And the acceleration of the car is, of course, one of the things that we'll be solving for. Placing this information into our previous equations, we find the following. These equations serve as the basis for solving the problem. This style of a problem is a definition of success problem. What you are attempting to do in the car is to avoid losing the race by accelerating. We need to specify the acceleration such that you reach the finish line before or at least tied with the train. How do we specify that you and the train reach the finish line at the same time. We do so as a double proposition. Firstly, we need to find out when the train reaches the finish line. 
This is the question when, but it is not a well-formed question. We need to ask, when does x of the train equal 2,000? What we require is that the car reaches the finish line at the same moment. So for that reason, we require that x of the car is equal to 2,000 under the condition that the time is equal to the answer to the previous calculation. Doing so will produce for us a particular value of the acceleration. That acceleration would tie the race and any acceleration larger than that would win the race. Let's do our two steps just as we've defined in order. First, to find when the train reaches the finish line, we use the relationship between x of the train and time, which is the first equation on the left, plugging in 2000 for the position of the train, we will find that that must be equal to 150 plus 20 times the time, yielding, after a bit of manipulation, that the time should be 92.5 seconds. We now require that the x of the car be 2000 under the condition that the time is 92 seconds. Clearly, to ensure this, we need to reference the equation that relates the x of the car to time, and that's the first of the three blue equations. Plugging in the 2000 for x of the car and the 92.5 for the time, we find the following expression. The only unknown in this expression is the acceleration of the car, and so we solve the algebra, yielding an acceleration of 0.2. 0.035 meter per second squared. Examining what we were originally asked, simply by approaching the problem as a definition of success, we have already answered number one, when does the train reach the finish line, and number two, the acceleration necessary for the car to reach at the same time. The final question we need to write as a well-formed question. How fast are you going when you reach the finish line? Well, you are in the car, so this is a question asking you to specify a value for the velocity of the car. At this point, there are two reasonable approaches for making this a well-formed question. One of them is to specify reach the finish line as x car is 2000. The other one is to specify that we reach the finish line at 92.5 seconds. That would be formulated as follows. The first one of these asks us to solve the relationship between velocity and position for the car. The second one asks us to solve the relationship between velocity and time for the car. I'm going to recommend that we go with the first one. And the reason is that the 92 and a half seconds is a number that we calculated. Although I do believe that it is correct, Nonetheless, it's a little bit of a safer approach to not propagate your own errors by referring back to the original values given to you in the problem. In this case, filling in the values into the appropriate equation, we find this expression for the velocity of the car squared. Although we need to be careful when taking a square root to consider both the possibility that the velocity would be a positive and a negative, Clearly, in this case, when you cross the finish line, you're headed to the right, which we've been using as a positive direction. Therefore, the velocity of the car, which is the answer to part C, is 23.2 meter per second. 